Hello, everyone. Good to be live again. Well, I'm really excited to talk astrology today. We have celebrity astrologer David Lawrence Palmer, the Leo Kingdom, with us today. He's going to join in. He he has really phenomenal insight in regards to historical events and current news events and looking at the alignment of the planets and the stars at those times. And there's more in common in the stars between certain historical events than you might think. He's going to talk about a connection between the Nazi Germany Olympics, 19, Nazi Germany hosted the Olympics in 1936, um, and uh, what was going into the stars on in the stars then versus now as China next month is, is about to host the Olympics as well. We're going to talk about that and several other headlines. So excited to bring him on. Before I do, I'm going to shout out the sponsor of the coverage today, which is uh, Glow with Ivory. Dermatologists recommend serums for nearly any aging, starting from as early as your 20s all the way up to the 70s and above for both its preventative and reparative benefits. Serums can work for any skin type from oily to dry and thousands of consumers surveyed showed that they are effective, but choosing the right serum among all the options found on store shelves can be difficult. This is why I highly recommend Glow with Ivory. This ultra-rich serum helps reduce the most visible signs of aging like wrinkles, age spots, and photo aging. This amazing product uses powerhouse ingredients to promote the appearance of firmer, tighter, brighter, smoother, and more youthful-looking skin. I have partnered with the creators of this amazing product to give my audience up to 38% off their own supply. To celebrate the new year, just go to glowwithivory.com or click that link down below to get yours today, glowwithivory.com. Okay, with that being said, let's talk astrology. Hey, How's it going? How, are, how are you? David, David Lawrence, Lawrence Palmer. Palmer. Oh, I'm Lawrence. getting an echo. Oh, let me fix that. Not sure if that's my end or your end. Okay, I think it went away. All right. So a lot going on in the news. Um, President Biden is just finishing up his speech as we speak. We've got the big rollout of, of Verizon and AT&T's um, cell phone uh, 5G service today. And new headlines in regards to China as well. Um, how are the stars looking, David? Well, I know that a lot of people out there are probably looking at the world like, the last two years have been so crazy and there's actually a reason for it. I mean, of course you can look at the world the way it's gone, but there's always a backstory just going out through history. That's been used for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, which is there's alignments in the universe that happen and they do trigger things. I mean, even Benjamin Franklin used the farmer's almanac to know not to sign the declaration of independence on the, second but on the fourth because it was a full moon on july 2nd of 1776 so wow. looking at the way that things are right now what we actually went through was the biggest event planetary wise in all pretty much the last millennium in 2020 which is no coincidence that we're dealing with a lot of the blowback from that we're dealing with you know if you were to use like the example of that tonka a uh, volcano that does happen under the ocean. Imagine if the planets, if we were to use that as an example, if that was like a hundred times, maybe a thousand times bigger than that one. And how do you deal with the destabilization of the energies that are happening in our lives? Wow. You know, there's been a lot of things like I just saw Biden was speaking and 2022 is definitely a better year than 2021 or 2020, but you're going to have to really start to, to look at the energies like this. One, 2020 was a set of planets, Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter, so the two biggest planets, and it was on the news, actually. You might have covered it when you were a news anchor, that there was this magical alignment of Jupiter and Saturn at the end of 2020 that hadn't happened in about 800 years where they were in the exact same spot in the sky. And we were actually, it was a conjunction, we call it. All that energy that happened in 2020 happened in an area that hadn't happened for 740 years. 
because there was also Pluto behind it. Now, I know that some people out there are going to say, well, Pluto's not a planet anymore. But it is. It's enough that NASA liked to take pictures of it in 2018 and have an obsession over it. And it's big. I guess you're saying it's big enough to have some sort of like influence over what's going on on Earth. Correct. Because the last time it happened was 1284. That mm -hmm. was what brought on the change of how the world works today. It was the end of the Knights Templar that got built up into that period. The Dark Ages started. And I'm not saying the Dark Ages are coming again. But then the planet Saturn and Pluto met again in Capricorn in 1517 into 1518. And that was, you know, Henry VIII, just 15 years later, basically, left the Catholic Church. We see the institutional part of our lives start to fall apart during these transits. And I know that it seems scary, but the truth is, is that this is a time where everything that isn't working for humanity and isn't working in the best way is coming down. So I know it's scary because we're all attached to it so much. I mean, if you just look at Biden's speech today, I mean, it was like he had his version of things. And then it was surprising to see the press just like, no, nope. like it's almost like the press actually was just saying the stuff that everybody's thinking and actually really clear. And he really didn't have a lot of answers to what to do. And he started rambling off into sentences. And unfortunately, 2022 here and all the events that we're seeing, they're all connected to 2020 that this energy is going to be with us for a minute, not just a minute, it's going to be with us for the next three decades. But think of the last time we had these three planets together, which was in 1983, okay? So we had in, to 1982. So that was what brought on the HIV epidemic out of nowhere. And look at how finally by the end of 2019, Nobody talks about it anymore. There's uh, there's an antiviral you could take now, and it's gone. Is that a coincidence? It's like you have to start to see that the patterns are everywhere. and So maybe these alignments are when Anthony Fauci pops onto the scene. He was there well, for AIDS. He's here for, he's here for the new illness. Yeah, he's a Capricorn, by the way. So actually, he's born in, I think his birthday is December 26th, if I'm correct. And so what's interesting about him is all these planets in 2020, and they were coming in at December of 2019, all met in Capricorn. He's a Capricorn. Mm. And there was a solar eclipse within a day or two of his birthday. And whenever there's a solar eclipse around your birthday, it's going to be a big year. So it, it blasted him to the top and it was with Jupiter, which is expansive and all that stuff. But it's not, it's not going to, it's not going well for him anymore because it was almost like shooting too far to the moon too quick. And, you know, how many more magazine covers does he need to be on when I thought it was all about public health? You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, he knows how to get to the top really well as a Capricorn, but this is shooting the moon too much and then it's bringing up everything. And unfortunately we're also at a time where 2022 is all about the energy of Pisces, the planet Jupiter and Neptune are meeting and they haven't met since 1856 in Pisces. And these are the two planets that are the rulers of Pisces and Pisces is the energy of illusion, spirituality. It's also in 1856. What are the events that took place in America that brought on the civil war by the time that Lincoln got elected in 1860 and then by 1861, right as we started, we went into the Civil War. So the divisiveness is even there in the astrology to the exact moment. We can wow. point them out. You know, people always look at things like, well, 1861 was a Civil War. It's like, yeah, but 1856 was a change in the presidency and the DNC swapping out people. So what do you think is going to happen in 2022? Do you, think really, do you really think Biden's going to be the president still? Or do you think the, 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 all the Democrats are going to play a nice fun swap here and get him mm -hmm. out and put... And do you even think maybe Kamala is going to be in there? Kamala? Like, with Hillary that's popping up out of nowhere? You have to remember in 1856, they picked Buchanan to be the president because President Pierce had quote unquote, blood on his hands because of the fights over slave states and staying in the middle of it, not kind of doing anything about it. And there was so much blood from bleeding Kansas that 
<clears throat> he was only a four-year president, first term, went to the DNC and they kicked him out and they put Buchanan because he was out of the country during that time. So if you notice with the Hillary thing, they're doing this whole, oh, yeah, she's been around. She's been, you know, reading her script she was going to read to people if she got <laughs> inaugurated or won that night. And she's perfect now. Right. What's right. the difference of the of the history and the exact astrology, which has taken eight since 1856 to happen now? Like, hmm. that's 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 where things get. For me, they're not crazy when I see them. I'm able to see what's about to happen, look at the history, and then go, okay, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to have all the same flavors. It's going to have all the same characteristics. It's like kind of how they redo movies now, right? You know what I mean? It's like, hmm. it's like they redid Blade Runner, right? It's like, you know, I talk to kids today, and they're like, yeah, that newer movie, Blade Runner. I'm like, no, the old Blade Runner. You know, like they don't know, right? So. Yeah. That's what astrology is when we're looking at the transits. It's kind of like we're looking at the old movie and then seeing how it's going to be replayed in the newer form. Well, it was interesting that you mentioned today that there's um, maybe a redo of the the 1936 Olympics. <laughs> yes. With the 2022 Winter Olympics coming up next month in China. Here, I'll share a headline from... Um, what's going on there I, I guess this is a headline today china warns foreign olympic athletes against speaking out on politics at winter games a member of china's olympic organiz organizing committee warned that foreign athletes may face punishment for speech that violates chinese law in the 2022 winter games spotlighting concerns about the country's restrictions on political expression so we're going into hostile territory next month and, and uh, you're saying there's some sort of star astrological connection with this and 936 Berlin games. Yeah, uh, the connection is if because uh, I'm somebody I'm going to give. I mean, today, right, it's all about the quote unquote science. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the original science. The planet Uranus is in the sign of Taurus. The last time it was in Taurus was 1933 through 19. 41 okay so you have to remember huh, those are all times that people look at as like i don't know if i want to be part of time in that life because uh, uranus is an 84 to 86 year transit around the sun so we have uranus and taurus in 1936 during that olympics and what's interesting is the planet pluto is exactly at the opposite place in the sky as where it was then to today so we're getting the similarities of that, a country that when I mean, they always talk about in 1980, how we did like a, a U.S., um, you know, strategy to, you know, make sure that our diplomats weren't part of the Olympics. But that, that's the smokescreen because it was weak compared to the 1936 Olympics with being in Berlin with the Nazi energy that was going on. I even think I sent you off the Holocaust Museum's website in 1936 that you know there was a big boycott of course over those olympics and nazism and mm -hmm. it was funny because it, the athletic union didn't want to even bring anybody there and it was crazier because the u.s uh olympic committee president avery brundage argued that boycott advocates were injecting political concerns where they did not belong and suggested that the boycott movement was orchestrated by a jewish-led conspiracy of radicals and communists so it's kind of weird, right? So Biden and America's not, we're not sending any of our diplomats. China's not allowing anybody to talk politics. But you have to remember that at that time, you know, if you were Jewish, it was a scary, you, they're, 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 they already were segregating people in Germany in 1936. Well, in, in, in China, they're just segregating people off of like their little, like, what are they calling it? Like their bubble little cities now i know we saw that in 2021 which is even weirder because if you see weird olympics pop up every time in the astrology that i hate to use it but it's world war and you can see with russia and ukraine right now china right now the uyghur camps and how it's like why are people not saying anything then there was just an article today and yesterday that says to tell every u.s athlete not to bring their phone because it right. might be spied on 
So all you have to remember that in 1936 during that Olympics, it was it was wild because around the streets, that's how they do it right now. China's kind of doing this zero tolerance, no tolerance, you know, CV world. And so around wherever the Olympics is going to be was the same like in Berlin, where you you saw that people were writing on the stores like, you know, no with the, with the Star of David, like, you know, no Jews and all this crazy stuff. And all the Olympians are walking down the street like this is weird. Yeah, well, this is the same thing. And it's about a lot of these same boycotting issues on such a big energy. And then also kind of the downplaying of it by the U.S. government by just kind of being like, well, we're just going to we're just going to not show up and then i it was ironic i think i sent you the article that msnbc is going to air the olympics and actually be political and say what's going wrong there in china about the uyghur camps and stuff which is kind of interesting because i think it's nbc that has the contract for the olympics Ooh, so uh, they hopefully china doesn't arrest them huh yeah, here's your article uh, that you sent me here. Olympic athletes advise not to bring phones to Beijing over spying concerns. Yeah. So. I mean, and, and that's what's like, that's what's kind of crazy, because if you really think about Hitler in 36 at that time, what was it that, you know, he was doing? He was he had all the all the world there. And it was just a couple years later by the time now he's invading countries and here we go, right? So it's kind of like China's way of getting all the energy of like, hey, this is going to be how we're going to figure out these countries and figure out what's going on with them and maybe get data and extract data mm -hmm. to go do what we're going to go do, like Hitler did. Right. And it's kind of yeah. funny because it's like we're dealing with Russia, too, at the same time, which is kind of like a Stalin. And then we're dealing with President G, which is kind of like a Hitler and how they be, they're buddies right now. But they also will turn on each other just like they did in World War II. So and the astrology for all that's coming up. Is it? Wow. Yeah, because where we're at with the planet Uranus and Taurus, we're halfway through the cycle Every time the planet Uranus enters Gemini, America went through its Revolutionary War, Civil War, and World War II, the three biggest wars. So we're headed towards the fourth one here. What? The, yeah. Oh I mean, God. I'm not saying this year, but you have to remember that we're going to see, you have to remember that when you look at history, when you look at events, People like go, well, I don't see it right now. It's like, well, no, if you like trace back any big event of like a World War II, it's like, oh, that happened. This happened. This happened. This happened. This happened. We're already seeing dominoes hitting. People just have to be awake of it. Wow. And, but yeah, with Uranus by 2025 coming here into the same space of, of Gemini, where we just had all the eclipses over the last year and a half. This is all it's getting it's getting intense. And 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 to be honest with you, 2022 definitely has more of the remnants of like the propaganda of like to get out of some of this CV stuff with war. And also who's gonna somebody's some country's gonna hold somebody responsible. Right? Like that's what's gonna happen. And, and and it's funny. I, I want countries will turn on each other, or will the little people in each country rise up? Both. Wow. Well, you mentioned the other day that uh, this connection between uh, the stars and planets in in 1776 versus this year. Um, so, what's going on with that? You brought well, so, up, you brought up Thomas Paine, so I'm I'm going to show the, his book that you brought up here. Yeah, so Thomas Paine brought out the book Common Sense, which were was a pamphlet um, book. I think it was a 47 page pamphlet book that he wrote in 1775, and then it was published and brought out to the public in January of 1776. Well, if you follow Planet Pluto, uh, America is about to go through its Pluto return. Pluto takes about 250 years 248 years to come around the sun and the exact position of where pluto is coming in the next month through this summer is when 
the founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. So a country goes through its big, you know, crisis and seeing if it can hold itself together on its Pluto return, the longest planet out. So it's here returning. But the Thomas Paine situation is exactly right now. January 1776, the astrology has the same remnants as it did then and uh, then to now. But what's even more interesting about it is common sense is what everybody is begging for right now. Begging. Is it an irony that that was the book that came out? And that actually is what got the people behind the revolution. You have to remember that people were not behind it in 1775. It was that's Thomas right. Paine's book that did. Yeah, that, that's what this uh, this history.com article starts out saying. Even after armed, armed hostilities broke out between the American colonists and the British forces in 1775, many prominent colonists seemed reluctant to consider the idea of actually breaking away from Britain and instead insisted that they were still its loyal subjects, even as they resisted what they saw as its tyrannical laws and unfair taxation. Yeah. So it made, it didn't make common sense that these people were saying, I'm a loyal British subject, yet I hate my tyrant King. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so when you actually look at, What's coming here for America, it's definitely going through its major test. I mean, the good news is the founding fathers. One thing about Capricorn is it will hold on to the very second like Fauci. Right. So our Constitution is something that will hold its line. I'm never going to refer to the Constitution and Fauci, but there's that energy of like, especially with with. Capricorn and Pluto, it, 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 a country that is going to hold the line on that paper no matter what, you know, and, and, and the only thing that could deal with anything right now that, that would take away that is energies that are outside of our influence, which means our number one influence that we need to pay attention to to look at is outside entities from other countries frequency stuff going on that's you know i know there's been a lot of the weird stuff that the government's been showing by ufos in the last year a lot of that is not what they're telling us there's there's more to it all than we even know they could even be using that as a blame too because we are coming into such uh the most weirdest energies that i'd say that of course america's ever gone through before by the astrology, but it would be the weirdest when it comes to like, how do we know what influences are really going on in the country now or who's infiltrated here already? We don't really pay attention to that anymore. It's always thrown out now on, you know, kind of this domestic terror thing now on the people, right? That would be only something that really would be thrown out by a foreign entity, not ourselves. Well, and, you know, yeah. And my thoughts go to China, that China has definitely infiltrated us. And you're thinking that is why um, that's why some of our leaders are are calling the American citizens the terrorists. Yeah, because you have to look at if I were to just look at the astrology of America, it, it technically is a cancer. It's a country that likes to take care of itself, take care of the world. We're always, I mean, we just gave 200 more million dollars to Ukraine today. <laughs> the United right? States is a cancer. I can't July 4th, 1776. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Wow. And that's where we, why we love July 4th so much with the family, barbecues, having fun with our friends, being out in the sun in the summer, right? Having mm -hmm. that feeling we, we, we usually celebrate in our hometowns. You know, it's not like we go fly to other places for July 4th. Right. We stay yeah. at our home and we put up our flags. And we have a good time. Right. We like to have people over and have a good, good time. You know, that's the way our country is. So we're not really a country that looks at each other like, oh, you know, we have a common thread that we can always find. So a lot of the de divisive energy right now is you got to pay attention to it is like, is it really us? 
And I think this might sound crazy, but I'm not afraid to go there. And that's why people watch me and my predictions, because I was saying in 2017 that all this stuff would happen that we've seen. And then in 2019, I went so hard. It was warning people like crazy. Wow. Yeah, you you got you got like seriously shadow banned on social media. I think YouTube almost deleted your whole channel, right? Because of yeah, the I mean, it's, things it's... you were calling out astrologically as far like as the election, right? Even that like, too. You, you predicted how the election would go. Yeah, 100%. And I and I warned people cuz that's that's an interesting story in itself. Every there's the it's called the curse of Tippecanoe. Anybody watching this can look it up. It's a presidential curse on zero year elections. So 2020, 2000, 1980, 1960, it's because of the astrology behind it. Jupiter, Saturn, the two biggest planets meet every 20 years, just so happens to be on the zero years. Wow. So what happens? 2000, Bush, Gore. Oh, it goes to a recount and then oh, wait, the Supreme Court is the one who makes the decision on that presidency for Florida to stop counting the votes. And then Bush becomes president. And then, of course, we all know 9-11 and all the weird stuff that happens with that. 1980, Reagan gets in office. An actor, the first not politician based upon or, biz, you know, he's an actor, uh, gets shot in 81 and survives. And then uses an astrologer named Joan Quigley in the White House for the rest of his term and survives using the astrologer, which was Seriously? highly publicized. Yeah, it was highly public. You look it up. It was, Wait, it was publicized deeply all the time. He was always being asked, like, are you following your astrologer? She planned even when to do the Supreme Court justice nominations, when Air Force One left and took off, when for him wow. to do a speech. Wow. Um, but he survived just... that that curse. Yeah, that's that's I had no idea. That's crazy. You can look that up. It's everywhere. uh, Wow. Um, It was all in the press back then, too. I'm sure some people that were all Reaganites back in the day remember that, that, oh, you know, Reagan and especially, um, you know, Nancy, she was she was the one who really got that whole thing going. But then JFK 1960, youngest president gets Mm -hmm. elected and shot. And wow. Then 1940 is FDR running for a third term, which we don't, we can't do that anymore. We ratified the uh, constitution for that one. Um, But he ends up dying in office on his fourth term. We also switched to a new VP, which was Truman because of that transit was the one. And then Truman dropped the bombs. Um, and, And the list goes on and on and on. And the big bomb, this one was just COVID, I guess. Well, the big, bo- no, this one, this one, 2020 was the weirdest one because what was it? One, we saw an election like we've never seen, right? Where there's a lot of questions over it, just like 2000, but different, right? Like, are yeah. these proper ways that the states and the federal government were looking at things, right? Those are the questions that were being asked on January 6th. They were, it's like, it's like, it's being all like pushed to the people that walked into the Capitol, right? So it's like, they're forgetting to talk about that the constitution, it's to the state electors and how the state's legislative energies are the ones that create the understanding of the laws. But you have to remember that there was people that were stepping over those states, right? Like the governors and and, and people like that that were just making yeah. the laws of the mail-in ballots and stuff like that and not going with the legislature to vote on them, which it's the powers in the legislature in the Constitution. That's so, why Texas sued in Supreme Court in December correct. and the justices were pussies and didn't even look at the, didn't even look Co- at it. Correct. So if you look at it from that point, that's one. But the other one that's really odd about the whole thing, right, is when we were in that in-between phase, you didn't see Bush, you didn't see Gore, you didn't see them put office of the president-elect when we haven't, you haven't won yet. Yeah. Right? And 
like mimic the presidential seal. It's not like the government gave Biden the office of president elect seal. He his campaign paid for that. The other weird things, because it's always weird things you need to look for in the on the 20 year, uh, you know, in the zero year elections. Mm -hmm. Like like one is with Reagan. He his slogan was make America great again. You know, people think that's Trump's. That's that's Reagan's same slogan. Oh, I didn't realize. Wow. Yeah. Right. So. OK, but th like the, the weird part is. The inauguration is done. In the weirdest way, there's 20,000, you know, National Guard outside. Um, Biden was supposed to do the inauguration trial, like, right? Like he was supposed to do like his trial talk on that weekend, but then canceled. There was one feed going into it on the day on 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 January 20th and and. You know, it shows sunshine and all this stuff, but it was the cloudy day and nobody was there. And so all the people we see on the news are watching a feed. They're not actually like there watching. Yeah, it was so weird. OK, then the 21 gun salute. Right. We, you know, we didn't get the same one of any president and look it up. It's all off YouTube now, but. <laughs> No military code. When they go to Arlington Cemetery to take the wreath, the president, and the vice president, Biden and Harris did not touch the wreath and bring it to them together and then put it back on. At the same time, when the 21 gun salute goes off, the second the president takes the inauguration, which he took before noon, not at noon or after before noon. And it was only a three cannon, not four cannon. And you look at the timing of when you do the shells to go off, if it's really slow and the first one you do is a dud, then that means that a foreign government or foreign entity has entered the cemetery. Really? Yep. And is that what happened? That's what happened. You can look it up. It's harder to find, but it's on, I think, Rumble, and I think you'll find it more on, like, you know, you'll find it. Wow. And you can watch every other president, Trump. Obama, all of them, you get the typical 21 salute and all of the guard are right there. Boom, boom, boom. And it's loud and nope, a dud. And then boom, really slow. I think it was like six seconds is the slow and like three seconds is the normal way. Like boom, boom. And they didn't do it right after the inauguration. They did it when he was at the cemetery. Just how, like, why are people not talking that? Why why are we not seeing every year the president goes and he gives his... Right now we're seeing a press conference. They're saying that he's going to show up to the Capitol and do, you know, the speech that every president gives at the beginning of the year. But we're not seeing a, 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 a State of the Union right now. We're seeing a press conference where he's calling on who he wants to talk to, not... Anybody saying what they get to say. Right. So yeah. all of it is, is the, my number one question, because I'm using astrology. I'm not because I'm not, it's not because I'm watching some conspiracy channel or anything like that. I'm an astrologer and I have all the television that I've been on for all my years and my own network and all that stuff. So like I do this all on my own. Like I'm not watching some other person's opinion. The main thing to me is with Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces, like it was in 1856, that was the beginning of people starting to develop what we know today as the photograph to, you know, like, is this a movie we're watching? The same way that the inauguration to me was very like a movie almost, you know what I mean? So that's the big question. Yeah. Now, today, today happens to be the rollout of, uh, you know, basically the expansive rollout of 5G with Verizon and AT&T. And there's a whole fiasco with the airports, um, canceled flights. I last checked, there were 300 canceled flights. And um, we're also in Mercury retrograde. So, yeah, um, I don't know. Is it, Was this predictable from Mercury retrograde or what do you gather from this? Here's Here's the headline. 
Yeah, big time. I mean, this uh, this Mercury retrograde actually is an Aquarius. I know you're an Aquarius, which deals with frequencies, right? Aquarius deals with electronics. It deals with electricity. And it was an exactly square, a 90 degree angle to the planet Uranus, exact when it went retrograde, which was also stopped and turning direct, meaning it was getting out of retrograde. So that's kind of like a Frankenstein moment of Frankenstein getting the electricity shock to his head and it all going kind of wrong. But also we have to remember that the planet Saturn is uh, in Aquarius. It hasn't been there since the early 90s and it's a you know 29 and 29 year cycle. You have to remember that we are in the weirdest of times dealing with these frequencies that you know when people put up, you know it's almost like validating what we were trying to say two years ago about 5G that we should probably take a little bit more time to focus on this and see if it's okay for human health and all these things. Now you actually have the FAA being like, please pay attention to this. And then you have the SEC who's like, I just want to throw all this through. You guys could have done more earlier. So you have two agencies fighting. And unfortunately, it it's not looking like it's going to go down well with this Mercury retrograde. And unfortunately, my biggest prediction that I made before all this would happen um, was in 2020, we saw the planets Jupiter and Pluto meet three times. The time before that they met was in the planet a sign of Sag, which Sagittarius is the planet that, or the sign that's ruled by Jupiter. So if you think about your life from 2007 to 2019, the world was the most open it's ever been, ever. You can just go anywhere. You can travel anywhere, you can go on vacation anywhere, you could open up a business anywhere, you could have done anything you wanted, you could have experimented life, and it was literally the most biggest open world. The fact that Jupiter-Pluto met in 2020 in Capricorn means this is a world now that only those that know how to get to the top, have your quote-unquote papers, have all of your the rules, we're in a rural world now. Yeah, it's, it's a 13-year exactly. cycle. It sucks. But like, that's kind of the stuff that, you know, some people don't want to know. So they don't, they don't want to come to astrology because it's like, ah, that's a little too much. But we're in a time where people want the information and how to, it doesn't mean that you can't still get through the world and understand it all and to make your life great. But it's like, we're in a world right now where they're shutting down, they're paralyzing the world. You, so you're, you said we entered a 13 year cycle. With with Jupiter Pluto, yeah. So we're gonna have regulations like this for thirteen years. Yep, you're already seeing it. Good lord. Have you have you seen the leisure and travel industry come back at all? No, no, two years in. No. So Sucks. what makes you think, you know, people think it's all gonna go back to normal, but also Jupiter Pluto is the understanding of how the world's gonna be, and it's much more of a Capricornian world where it's like, okay, I gotta make sure that I plan for things. I just can't just be Sagittarius and be, woo, everything's good. And there's always an open door somewhere. There's no, it's like, no, there's very few doors open and you need to know how to open them. Or you got to advance yourself to the right place or know the right people or have a, a, a corporate energy or a government energy that allows you to pass through the door. Yeah. Well, so you, you have meant- to like kind of know how to, the world works really well right now. And I'm not saying that you follow it, but you have to understand how to play their game, play their game, but your way. Mm. Well, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, 2022 is going to be easier than 2021. According to the stars. (laughs) Yeah, because those three planets, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, meant 2020. And so now they're all three spread apart. So Jupiter went into Pisces. Saturn's in Aquarius, and now Pluto's finishing up here in Capricorn over the next year and a half to two years, right? So now there's a spread of energy. When a bunch of big planets get together, think of it like being in a crowded room with nowhere to breathe. That's what it felt like in 2020. Like you're, just, But it was so funny because that was what they didn't want from us, right? So, like, but it felt like there's no more room, right? It's just like every, the world, like my life is just, it's closing in on me. Because there's not enough room or energy when all these big planets meet in the same area. It just feels overwhelming. The fact that there's some room to breathe now 
you're going to see that. But my, my, my craziest prediction about 2022 is even though, yes, it's going to feel better and it's going to feel more, I don't even want to use the term free, but I would say more loose than it's been is that you have to remember that the greatest propaganda is going to be happening. Jupiter and Neptune, if you look at the political cartoons of 1856, make our politics look boring. Really? If you look up the political cartoons of the 1850s, especially 56 through 58, which is also where the planet Neptune was exactly this year as it was in 1858 when Lincoln did his house divided to speech and lost as senator of the new party of the Republican Party and then came back and won against that same senator for the presidency in 1860. That the astrology is also saying that the propaganda is going to be, oh, everything's fine now over here. So it's going to be flipped, right? We get the news that says everything's so bad, but you look around, you're kind of like, I don't know about that, right? Now they're going to be like, everything's great. It's fine. And you're going to be looking around like, what is happening here? Why is this? It's going to be all like that. Flipped. Wow. wow. And I know that's a mind trip to people, but that's going to be the mind trip. And, and this is going to be where there's going to be this whole, like, let's just keep shoving things under the rug, right? Like, I think the, the best way to put it would be like, what are the repercussions of 2021? that we're just going to try and shove under the rug as we're going to see from our governments and stuff. The reason why I've been somebody who's been very vocal, especially during these times about making sure that we don't just jump into things that are experimental is because we had a very hard 2021 with Saturn square Uranus in Aquarius and Taurus, which means bad experiments gone bad. And I said that before a lot of these experiments came out. Oh, you're talking about getting it in the arm. Yeah, that we're about to see the shoving under the rug of those bad experiments. They already are, but we're about to see the great propaganda that everything's fine and move on to something else, which is obviously going to be because of this Olympics, Russia right now, China, these kind of things to distract and I was going to say this earlier. Think about that telescope, the James Webb telescope that just left on December 22nd of 2021. It's $10 billion. It's the biggest thing we've ever made as a telescope since Hubble. Hubble is old. It's like having a 1980s like Chrysler like up there. Okay. Well, wow. we're about to take pictures that are supposedly going to go to the origin of when the universe started. Right. That's what they're saying. Yeah. There's, they're willing to put all this money and all this attention on that, but they won't put any origin to the root cause of the pandemic. Yeah. But when you do go to the root cause of the pandemic, that's going to be, if, if we were part of that, are we the new Nazi Germany to the world? Or is it, no, it was China. Oof. You have to, you have to start to see that this is this is where why everybody's kind of positioning themselves. And it's also I'll go into that in a second, but it's also very weird because that's the main thing is the positioning of. OK, whether that's a propaganda story, too, of the origin of wherever it comes from, right, to create a war. Yeah, that everything we have to do right now, we have to look at with a deep question and we have to look at it and make sure that we just don't buy it right away. That everything, especially anything that is about aliens or UFOs or the, even the first pictures that they try and bring back from the James Webb telescope that's going to be in April here. It's turned on right now. It's launched. It's turning those 18 mirrors on. And it's about to take pictures farther than we've ever seen before. And they're also going to put a lot of blame. But, you know, the number one, I think, hidden element right now with Jupiter Neptune is in 1859, we had um, a solar flare that took out a lot of the first, you know, communications on Earth. And uh, when you look at the sun right now, it's been solar flaring crazy. 
We also are in a really weird time where we're at a time where the poles have been shifting more dramatic than ever. And the earth over the last two years has been speeding up its rotation. And these are all the telltale signs of a 12,000 year cycle that we could see in the carbon data of the earth that the poles go through its shifting. So one, the big question is, is the origin of CV frequency based because the earth is freaking out and we're getting radiation from the sun that normally would be protected by our, our electromagnetic shield. If you look up the symptoms of solar flares to humans, it's the same symptoms. What are they? The solar Headache flares to, humans. to fatigue to weird ways that happen with the lungs, all that. Oh my gosh. You look them up yourself. These go back to like over the last 10 years. So maybe it wasn't Fauci. Maybe it was a solar flare. I mean, I always well, think back to the Spanish flu of, of uh, 1918, I guess it wasn't like, well, Fauci didn't create that. So sometimes these, um, you know, these plagues come around. They do. But my predictions back in the day, which they're all on my YouTube still and they're all over, is that this would be an unnat. It would feel like it's not from the divine, not from God. It's like some sort of weird outer energy we've never felt before or unnatural. Uh, but an unnatural yeah. force would be because the way that nature works with the earth is that the electromagnetic field protects us from the sun's radiation. Well, we've the scientists have been, and this also goes into the climate thing that when the earth is doing this crazy stuff. Antarctica has been the coldest on record over the last six months. There's been more ice ever than recorded down in Antarctica. Now, yes, the North Pole is losing its ice, but it's being compensated for the amount that's down in there in Antarctica. But that's also because the poles are, the South Pole is no longer in Antarctica. Wow. They have to keep, why do you, have you noticed on your GPS, have you ever noticed you'll be going down the street and then it'll like lose you and you'll be like, what the heck? I, I, I need yeah. this right now. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're like, oh. And you I'm can look up plenty of articles. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can look up plenty of articles over the last couple of years of where the military is what created GPS. It was 2000 when they gave it to the public to allow to be used. I didn't realize it came from the military. Yep. So you have to realize that they have to do like calculations and then they have to recalibrate the gps satellites based off our pole shifting wow that's crazy these are the things that people aren't looking at that's what i'm saying a lot of it is more of a show mm -hmm. because it's almost like how many movies have we watched whether it's armageddon or anything it's like you never want to show the public like what's really going on so this whole CV thing is about something completely different that every truth channel and everything is getting close to, but it's almost like, how come Hillary never got prosecuted, right? It's like, oh, and then there was the Russia collusion. Like, to me, I'm at a place right now where my life been a, and being an astrologer, it's like, why are all these people connected? Why was Trump at, at Hillary at Trump's wedding? Why was all this, the, there's way, Epstein and all the, I know all that stuff has its validations, but it's the get everybody to watch the new celebrity political drama while not showing what's really going on. There's a whole other thing going on. That's what the astrology says. A completely thing that people aren't even thinking about. They're not even... They're not even contemplative at all that, that, that everybody's still trying to get it in this way. And it's an obsessive thing. And like Dr. Malone said, it is a mass psychosis, but it's bigger mass psychosis than even he says. It's a mass psychosis off of this, what you've been sh being shown off something that's not real, right? It's just projection off your television, your phone, and it's all curated like it's a like a show. Wow. Um, Every part of it. Every part of it. Why are all the characters all connected in some way, even going back so far? Even Joe Biden. Like, how in the, how in the hell 
did Joe Biden become the nominee? Like that makes no sense. Yeah, he, it no, all I'm makes no those, sense. The the sixteen Democratic primary contenders, none of them were popular. And when and I was assigned at the time to go and interview voters, like, hey, who, who do you want to win the Democrat nomination? And they're like, uh, whichever they, they said, whichever one could beat Trump. They didn't like any of them. They just wanted someone to beat Trump. They wanted the anti-Trump. So and you know that that's how Democrats feel about Joe Biden. They don't like him. They just don't want to. They they don't want Trump. Well, and the other thing about this astrology, what's interesting about the Democratic Party is their their astrology looks so bad. It's the worst I could ever see. So the that, Democrats have a bad juju astrology. Yes, because the found what you do as an astrologer is you look at, OK, when was the party founded? When, when you it? look at when you look at it. Their astrology is so bad right now, I can't even describe. Also, the events of the 1850s were from Democrats. Civil War. You know, that's why they're not wanting to talk about the Civil War. That was all Democrats. Yeah. Okay. Two, the Civil Rights Movement. It was the Republicans who voted for civil rights, not the Democrats that passed it under Johnson that was a Democratic president. So this whole voting right thing and all that stuff, people need to wake up. They've never passed anything for civil rights. It was also Clinton who passed the big crime bills that caused the crime that they're trying to say is so bad now that they need to get rid of. On every... Manip level it's it literally is them the whole time if you use history and the astrology literally i mean it literally i mean it's just like you can just go down the list of the transits and right now we're at this one where they're playing their own smoke screen with biden for something else to come in if i if i were to give the democrats a sign i would say that they're um a taurus a taurus with a cancer moon that's interesting. Manipulative. Um, I've got someone blowing up the comments asking a, a, to ask you about the U.S. dollar and the economy. What What's astrology saying about, about finances? Well, I'm sure you can see that. Okay, so let's use 1776, for example. We go to our own new currency, the Continental Congress does, with Continental money. It becomes a whole new system with not much backing. And what do the British do? They they literally start counterfeiting the money and pushing counterfeit confe uh, uh, um, you know money from the from the Continental Congress, right? And Benjamin Franklin figures a way to get rid of that by going, oh, what if I actually spell something wrong because those British are so perfect about their etiquette? That they'll they'll fix it for us. I'm not even kidding. This is how smart Benjamin Franklin was. That then he they were able to tell what was the fake currency based upon the stuff that was spelt wrong was the real currency. The spelt that stuff was spelt right was the fake. But you have to realize that we're at a moment where the federal government, the Fed, the Reserve, with Pluto and Capricorn, they're going to hold on to the very last second. So. Yes, like things like crypto and stuff are definitely much more of a longer stronghold, but they're definitely, it's definitely, this is not the year where you're just going to see it all completely end. If anything, they are going to come up with the craziest schemes to keep it all going because it's not until 2024 when we're going to see it completely crash. But I would say that we're going to see some crashes this year. Hmm. And I would say that for people to really be focused more on Okay, what are the stuff that I really need in my life? We're going to see continued supply chain issues with Saturn and Uranus still squaring. I would stay away from the new miracle anything this year. That's not the only miracles are from God, not anything that is from some sort of like miracle scientific thing, including whatever these pictures are going to show from the telescope, yeah. but especially in the crypto world or in gold or in silver, 
this is also a time where the asset is truth. The asset is the people and the rights that we have in using them. So, it's not money. So that's I, the irony. So I shouldn't put my dollars in a new crypto coin. Should I put them in Bitcoin? Or should I not transfer I mean, my dollars to Bitcoin? I mean, I think you have to learn how to play it kind of smart. If you look at like a bunch of whales, they're, you're diversified. Yeah. So think if you were living in 1776 and you weren't a founding father and you weren't part of Continental Congress. And so they were dealing with money that was from the queen or the king, King George from Britain, right? If you were just a normal person, you would have some of that, and then you would have some of this Continental Congress money, and you would be like figuring it out. But that Continental Congress money, guess what happened? By the time the end of the war was done, it was overprinted, it was overdone, there was nothing backing it. So then they just started a whole new system. Mm. So, yes, I think it's safe to do that, but you have to remember it's super volatile. I'm not, I'm not here to give like financial advice, but as an astrologer, it's like, yeah, I, and I've made the predictions. It's not till 2024 that it completely crashes and ends. You have to remember that because of, and, and I'm a, I'm a full-blown capitalist, so I believe in crypto a lot. I own crypto, a lot of it. But you have to remember too, it's like the old penny stock days where it's like, yeah, this is the next new coin. This is the next new thing because there is no regulation, which I, I don't believe in regulation. But it's like, don't be a sucker on some of these coins, like how you know how many coins are right now? It's insane. I can't. I, yeah. I don't even know. I'm gonna have to go look on Coin Market Cap and go see. There's thousands now. Yeah, it's just like penny stocks. And you have to remember that it's create an idea, get as much cash as you can, and then up. Oh, we weren't. It didn't work. But sorry, and then you lose your money, and then they run away with the money. Thanks. Yeah, that's what happened to my money in the small coins. <laughs> right. So I made a lot of money with Bitcoin and Ethereum, but all the little correct. pop culture ones, you know, think of ones. think of Bitcoin and Ethereum as the new gold and silver. Mm. And think of some of the coins as like assets like homes or cars or rare books. That's what I've been doing because there's no, Barnes and Noble. Do you think that's going to last much longer? Yeah, well, books seem more valuable than ever right now because of the way the internet's being edited. People rely Correct. on the internet to look things up, but the internet's becoming all propaganda. Um, yeah, and, and food and, 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 and you know what? RVs, trucks, the stuff to where you could get the things that you need. If you needed to go get wood, if you needed to go get something, you can get a, you have a truck that's four-wheel drive. Why do you think... Mm -hmm. Do you think it's really a supply crisis? Because what the hell happened with this whole chip shortage? There, that's that's not this. We're not getting the full story on that based off the astrology. Hmm. That's a supply chain crunch on purpose. What was the number one thing that got taken away? And look at used car prices now. They went up 36%. It's terrible. I'm trying to find a car right now. <laughs> Right. And so like and RV sales are through the roof. You have to remember in 2020, it was truck and RV sales that went through the roof. In 2008, it was the car market that was actually the, 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 the market with the housing crisis that caused the recession. So how funny we're in the opposite right now. We're in overvalued cars, but, but a lot of it is because are they going to give us new cars? Because it's unfortunate with all this Capricorn energy that came in 2020 that this is going to be my hardest truth. But it's one thing that everybody has the ability to do is those at the top can get the things you need. Those at the bottom that don't want to find a way. But more than ever, you can build your own business now. You can create your own way. You, but you have to step up. Part of the weird thing is our like for you and I, our grandparents that were born during the depression with Pluto and cancer, we're in Pluto and Capricorn, the opposite sign. We're entitled now. Like, Oh, that job's not good enough for me. They would do anything for a job. Our great grandparents just to feed. We're in the opposite place where people are too entitled and they're not realizing, are you willing really to even step up to the entitlement that you feel and ready to do the work?
Because this is not going to be good if you don't want to do the work and understand how to really navigate the world and put yourself in places that can get you it. So if you want a brand new 2022 car, do you know the owner of that dealer? Have you, do you, uh, you know what I mean? Like, do you know how to do those kind of things? Because that's how the world's going to work now. If you're just going to sit in your little life and be kind of like, oh, it all come back to the way it was. It's not going to be that way anymore. It's like those who know how to go for it in life are going to do well. Those who do not right now are not going to do well. It's very simple. It's a whole new game. For it's a whole new game. It's a monopoly game. For about and so years. if you're going to play Monopoly and just be like, I'm going to hold on to my cash while every, everybody's buying Boardwalk and everybody's putting hotels on Boardwalk and every time you come through in Park Place, you're paying, then you're out of money at the end of the game. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do something, whether it's create with the North node now in Taurus for the next 18 months, that just happened yesterday. We just left an 18 year cycle of the nodes that were in the nodes of the nodes of the moon. That's how we know where their eclipses are. So if the sun and the moon meet wherever the North node or the South node of the moon is that changes, it goes counterclockwise. It goes the opposite direction of the planets. That's where we know eclipses will be. That's how we can tell. Like the one thing about astrology or if we just want to like use more modern terms, right? It's like astronomy and understanding the planets is how do we know exactly when there'll be a full moon? How do we know exactly when they'll be? We know for sure you'll see Venus at this moment pop up now as the morning star. That that's what's coming because we're in a Venus retrograde right now. So we can't see Venus. It's like astrology is that accurate to where, like I said, for those that are out there that think it's the devil or anything like that, like our founding fathers used it. The Catholic Church used it. It goes to the embedding of all of our spiritual places from every religion to all the way to our foundations of the good people in our governments and stuff that started them. And I think the Bible was talking about astrology when I think it was Ecclesiastes. It talks about God putting the stars in the skies for signs and seasons for signs. I mean, I mean, a lot of people like you like to use the three wise men too, right? Like the, what, what, how did they find the star of Bethlehem? Right. And how did they find that that was Jesus? They were wise men who were astrologers. Yeah, I always, uh, you know, a lot of Christians get offended when I post about astrology on my Instagram. Um, I made a, an astrology uh, related post the other day and it ended up offending a pro astrology person because the post I, I made on my Insta story was about like, basically in life, it's about your choices uh, of um, it's about discipline, uh, committing to something in order to achieve your future. I believe that, but I think astrology is helpful because it shows you your tendencies. Um, you know, like the world is tending this direction right now, or ha yeah. has an inclination. A lot of us have subconscious inclinations to do certain things that could be influenced by the stars, but if we discipline ourselves and make a commitment to, to a different future, we can achieve that. And I think st astrology is helpful because it can shine light on your tendencies. You can be more aware of them and decide whether that's a tendency you want or you don't. But anyway, I was trying to put that on my, my Instagram and uh, I've offended both sides now. <laughs> that's the problem is we're in a world right now. If you think of the divisiveness, it's like, we're all on the same team for freedom. Now, I can't speak for every astrologer, but I know a lot of astrologers out there are all about God, that we believe that it's God that created the planets, the heavens and the stars. And if any way, it's, it's, it's a weird way of how God communicates to us. If you think about it, like we always talk about looking in the heavens. I mean, we just you can just look outside every day and look up at the heavens and they're talking to us. And that's God. There's God within all that. It's not praising the planets. It's not praising them like the Romans did as gods. It's about seeing the beautiful synchronicities and God speaks in synchronicities, you know, like when my grandmother died a year and a half ago, it's like if, 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 if I see a license plate because I'm Dutch on my mom's side, if I see Oma, I take a picture and it always will be right when I'm thinking about her. Like those are those are the things in life that whether you're Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Muslim, 
we all can feel the the beautiful connection to it all we can feel the beautiful connection to the universe and to and and, and we're all and everybody's got to realize we're all on the same team i was putting posts up all all, all the time and because i'm verified you know, it goes right to the top and then people like it, but then they'll look at me and they'll be like, wait, you're an astrologer? Like, and then now they associate with me being on the left. And I'm like, I'm for freedom, yo. I'm for, like, we're on the same team. Like, relax. And I'm not the devil and I don't praise the devil. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm all about God. And, and, and I mean, we don't, I don't think we need to do this podcast to go deeper into all that because it takes me eight hours to do those lectures to show people why did the Bible put down a lot of these things like astrology or psychic work. I wanted to know that for myself. And I did uh, an event in 2016 in a lecture that's on YouTube for free called Age of Deception. And I go through all the history and show that it was used to convert people to Catholicism, to the, to the Catholic Church, and get them out of the Roman way. And it was the first time in 800 when you had the Pope become the Emperor of Rome, which is one thing in America that we don't allow, right? The separation of church and state. But when you bring them together, then you employ those religious views into the state. Wow. So why do you think that the founding fathers put in God we trust, or they just said of God, they don't say of Jesus. Right. They keep it more vague. And they were Masons. Yeah. And the Mason Masonic way is that we are all brothers because it's a brotherhood, a fraternity. We're all brothers and we all believe in the divine that there is a God, but don't bring your religion in here because then that's going to divide us. Right. A lot of the first Americans came to America to flee religious persecution. And that's my fate. I'm a direct descendant of Isaac Allerton behind here. I have all my papers of being a part of the Mayfire Society. My family came here in 1620. My wow. family on my dad's side has been in America since 1620. Wow. We, we became Quakers. We were on the Oregon Trail to Oregon. And my grandfather finally from Oregon came to Southern California. Wow. My so my family and I'm um, part of you know, DAR or Sons of American Revolution, Daughters of American Revolution. I have six family members that fought the American Revolutionary War, all that were descendants from the Mayflower, and it was all about religious persecution that was going on from King James. And it was ironic because it's the King James Bible that they brought with them because that was the first Bible printed in English. Before then, you had to go to a church to hear a priest give you because they could only read in Latin. And King James was fascinated with, you know, theater because he funded Shakespeare. So guess what? King James version of the Bible is a Shakespearean over dramatized version of the Bible. Oh, it's my favorite version. <laughs> but you know what's interesting is what was the book that he did before the King James version of the Bible? Do you oh, know what, what book that it? is? No. What Demonology. Oh. Because he was a little bit psycho and believed that witches were out causing storms that couldn't get him to his new betrothed wife across to, I think it was like where we would think of like Finland today or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So he was trying to get there and trying to get her and there were storms. He also was part of witch trials. He was very, he had some very radical beliefs about psychic energy and all that yet he also damned people being gay yet he was gay king james look it up oh my gosh it's all over yeah, the history books wow you've got your history down so that's the thing that people don't want to look at yeah it's uh yeah it's it's crazy how people get divided you know and, but there's uh, no point in getting divided about being so sure. It's like we're all humans here and like we need to all get together in this moment here because the only resistance there really is is us being together and not divided. And remembering, especially if you're in a, if you're an American watching this, 
we're the only country where it's about the people. And there is no other country. Like, if I were to give you some better energy about the astrology of these times, Australia, the UK, Canada, they're going to have to go through what we went through in 1776. We already went through that. We have to just make sure that we bring it back to remaining the way it was stated. We've already done the hardest of the work, but it's a hard job. Don't get me wrong. But look at Australia. They've been stripped of their guns. Look at UK. They've been stripped of their guns. Canada, they've been stripped of their guns. They have a task that's way harder. Yeah. And how come as America, why aren't we going and calling out these countries, even if they are allies being like, why are you locking these people down and forcing people to do things and doing all this crazy stuff? That's dictatorial. That's totalitarian. That's what this country's founded on is going and calling out. Even Biden's speech today about Russia just being like, eh, well, if he goes in there, I'm going to throw sanctions on him. It's like the motherfucker is going to do it because guess what? Biden's just not threatening him. Right. right. And I think they're hyping up Russia again as a distraction from China. So Correct. Which yeah. China and Russia have been doing drills for months and months and months and years and years and years. And, and guess what? China and Russia are up in space doing more stuff than we're doing. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's crazy. And now they're buddies with um, the Taliban. <laughs> I, well, that's what China's been doing behind our backs right now, which, again, Afghanistan, they don't even talk about that anymore. What happened there? Yeah. And that that's that's that was Vietnam all over again. But, you know, yeah, we have to realize that. Our task. If you're an American, is to re remain vigilant about our constitution and hold that because no matter what, no matter what court you go to or whatever, you can really start throwing that one down. And it even in the worst person that you see out there, there's that that was embedded in them. You know, you can see it come out of these people sometimes too, where it's like, uh, uh, you know, and and so. But in these other countries, they have to go through their revolution. America, just the revolution is the revelation of remembering what we are. Right. We got to get back. back right. To our so, freedom. yeah. And, and that's all really. And so there's really, you know, I know there's a lot of work ahead and it seems scary. But everything that's been thrown at us has been because you fell for it and you you consented to it. That's right. Well, look, it's been such a great conversation and um, we'll have to do it again. You, you have a lot of knowledge on history and, uh, and the stars. It's fascinating. So everybody, uh, David Lawrence Palmer is his uh, website and Instagram link in description. And I will have to put your YouTube in there too. Um, so yeah, you can just find me. Just type in the Leo King. I go by the Leo King. Awesome. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Ivory. All right. Bye. Bye.